in as much as negative gearing is a, a difficult thing for most people to do, it does have benefits in the long term. So negative gearing is pretty much a situation where somebody buys a property uh, that they want, uh, whether it's a, a residential property or a business property, but they, at the end of the month, they can't positively cash flow. Or they scrape around, to use the local term, to pay for their monthly mortgage repayments. The, the returns from the property are less than what you actually need to pay to service the, the mortgage or to service the loan. So as a result, what happens is that you struggle all the way till you are actually able to maybe sell the property and then you, you hope at the end of that sale you can actually generate a profit from the sale. So is it a good approach? It depends. But most of the people who do negative gearing, they are very clever people. The bottom line is that people are taking risk with the hope that if they buy a property, the value of the property will eventually go up at some point before they actually uh, sell the property. So they hope they buy it with the with the understanding that the value of the property is going to go up and they keep it for one or two years and then eventually sell it. Why do people do negative gearing? They do negative gearing for tax reasons, much more than for simple investment reasons. The idea is that if you buy a property and you keep it long enough, say two years, when you sell that property, you will eventually get reduction in capital gains tax. Let's look at what negative gearing would look like for a person who is buying a property. So let's suppose you buy a property, maybe three million, and the monthly repayment for this property, monthly repayment, monthly repayment is um, bi-weekly, okay, bi-weekly, 5,000, for argument's sake, which means every month you will pay about 10,000. But, and then you rent out this property. So rent for the property, you get bi-weekly, say 3,000. What this effectively means is that your repayment to the bank is more than what you're actually getting from renting all the property. Meaning that you would have to pay from your own resources the difference between 5,000 and 3,000. The value of the property has gone up 1.8 million and you are actually going to sell this higher. So that is where, why people negatively gear. So today, the main point I was talking about uh, is negative gearing. Why people negatively gear uh, properties. So I'm sure you, you can do the math that in as much as negative gearing is a, a difficult thing for most people to do, it does have benefits in the long term. Because if you can sustain a property for two years, which is negatively geared, which is pretty much not giving you positive cash flows because these you are getting negative cash flows. That means you can recoup your expenses through capital gain, which is the difference between 3 million and 4 million. So that is the main reason why people do negative gearing. And I'm sure you will appreciate that there is a lot of risk to this. And if you are willing to actually if your bet, it's pretty much you could call it a bet. If your assessment of this property, the potential for this property going up, if your assessment for the potential of this property going up is very accurate and it does indeed materialize and it goes up, you will be able to recoup these expenses much easier. One should assess their own risks and understand 
where they stand. But if you are very sure that your assessment is correct, because indeed it does create potential, especially in places where, or residential areas, or in places where there is a lot of demand for property, or there is no vacancy, the vacancy rate is very low, and people are looking for property, or people are looking to buy in a particular area, negative gearing is something to go for. But also, just know that if that risk uh, is not in your favor, or if it doesn't materialize, then this could actually widen. So, yeah, it's a 50% uh, um, chance of success, there is 50% chance of success, but equally, there is a lot of risk to negative gearing. But that is not to say people shouldn't do it. That's not what I'm saying. All I was trying to do here is to explain what is negative gearing and where are the rewards for negative gearing and why should people do it if they are very confident of what they want to do. So if you're confident of what you want to do, go for negative gearing. But if you are not sure, just assess your risk thoroughly and make a decision as what is uh, right for you. Thank you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do uh, so we can uh, have these conversations again in the future. Thank you.